So welcome to part two of my International Moth Project uh, and in this video we are looking at sanding. So I used wet sanding on my boat uh, and the reason for that was mainly just because it keeps the uh, paper cleaner and keeps the surface cleaner um, so it doesn't get clogged up with the dust as it would do with dry sanding. Um, the other reason was because I'm in a fairly enclosed space um, and so I didn't really want the dust getting up everywhere uh, and it also meant that I didn't have to put up big dust sheets um, to stop the dust from getting on everything else in the garage. So for me it was just easier um, and a bit of a quicker method. I started with 120 grit sandpaper and I've gone up to 240 so far. Um, it will be getting smoother than that as I get towards painting but that comes later. Um, I started with 120 and focused on the green spots uh, because the green is painted over the orange uh, so that needs to go first and then used the 120 um, over everything until I was getting back towards uh, the undercoat. Once I was seeing the undercoat then I would switch to the 240 uh, to smooth everything out, make sure to get rid of the scratches as I kept uh, going down a bit further. So we'll have a look at the equipment I'm going to be using. Firstly in terms of safety I've got a door open and a window so that should provide some ventilation through so that any dust that does become airborne should be drawn out. I'm then going to wear some safety glasses that way any dust that does become airborne doesn't go into my eyes. I'm wearing a dust mask so this is going to filter out any of the dust that does become airborne so that I don't breathe it in. So they're really important and always worth putting on um, for your safety. So next we've got some sandpaper. I've got some wet and dry sandpaper and it goes from 240 to 600 grit. I've also got some finer grit, so I've got some 800, 1200 and 1500 when we're polishing up and getting rid of all the scratches. Then I've got some cloths so that I can clean the boat as I'm going along using water, make sure to get all of the dust away um, so that it doesn't clog up the surface. So then I've got some acetone solvent uh, and this is really good for getting rid of uh, any of the residue left on the boat from the stickers, making sure it's really nice and clean uh, before we move on to the next stages. I've then got a bucket of water and this is going to be used with uh, the sandpaper and with the cloths to make sure that it's all nice and clean. It's worth remembering before you change grade of sandpaper to change the water as well because the uh, dust that comes off can clog up the new piece of sandpaper and leave scratches that you don't want. So now we've looked at the equipment, I'm going to grab out some sandpaper, turn the boat over and start sanding it down. So I'm just in the process of sanding back um, the stern area here and uh, I thought it'd be useful to mention um, how far back I'm going. So the black here that you can see is uh, the carbon um, and then the uh, sort of grey colour uh, is the undercoat. The orange is the first layer of the top coat and then the green is, is top coat on top of that. Um, so as I'm sanding the green's going first as you can see so I'm going to sand the green away first then I can start flatting the, the whole area back to make it nice and smooth. So the green is always slightly higher than the orange because it was painted on top. Um, so that's all going to go. And then where the orange crosses over with um, the undercoat, um, I'm not too worried about. But I don't really want to be going um, any further than this um, because this is already all the way back to the carbon. If I start to go further, it's going to start to go, actually dig into the carbon, which I don't want. So I'm going to have a mixture of the orange and uh, the grey and the black as I'm going forwards, more like this kind of thing. Um, so this is sanded back and then I can just go up the grades, keep sanding it, keep sanding it until I get a really nice smooth uh, finish. And I'm going up the grades, even though this is kind of how, I, how it's going to look at the end, you can still see the scratches in there from the more abrasive papers. So as we go up the grades, um, you're going to see these scratches disappear and it's going to become really nice and smooth. The really important thing about sanding is that you need to take your time. 
um, because the finish that we have on the boat once we finish sanding is the finish that's going to come through all of the layers of paint. So if we've got some scratches and we haven't you know, spent the time and polished, these up, polished it up properly, they're going to come through to the top coat and then we're going to have to spend more time polishing back, uh, sanding back, polishing to get a really good finish on the top coat. In some areas like this, um, we had a bit of a gel coat repair, um, which wasn't ideal, but uh, we put it in because we didn't know whether um, it was leaking in this point uh, and there was a bit of a low point. So we um, added some gel coat in and what I'll do is I'll grind this out uh, and then we can lay it back in properly, um, probably with a bit of epoxy and carbon, make it really nice and smooth. Um, so then uh, it's hydrodynamic, uh, looks good. And then when the paint goes on the top, uh, it's going to be nice and smooth and an invisible repair, hopefully. And that's kind of what we'll do as we go through the boat. We'll find these these marks. Um, we'll note down where they are. Um, so when we come back to doing the repairs, we know exactly where the repair sites are. So we can go straight in and do it rather than having to look over the whole boat and find them again. So I've just finished sanding the boat back. Um, I ended up going up to 240 grit in the wet sandpaper. And I think that's given quite a nice smooth finish already. Um, before painting, I'm going to go up to 320 grit. Um, so that'll make it really nice and smooth. Uh, so that when the paint goes over, it's going to nicely um, flow out. Um, before we get to the painting stage, I've got some repairs to do. So around the king post area of the uh, bow of the boat, um, I've got some del delamination. So I'm going to um, sort that out. And then on the bottom of the boat, um, I've got a couple of spots uh, that have gone a bit, little bit soft, so I'm going to dig those out, repair those, um, and then there's a bit of filling and fairing to do. So mostly it's just where the carbon weave has started to come through um, uh, as I've sanded down. Um, there's some other bits where there's just low spots. Um, I just want to make sure the boat is really nice and smooth, really nicely fared, um, so that when we put the paint on, it's not going to, uh, we're not going to have anything coming through. Uh, so that's the plan at the moment um, and we'll see how we go. So unfortunately I didn't get very much footage uh, for this part of the project. Um, by the time I thought about setting a camera up uh, and filming as I was sanding, um, I was already most of the way through so there wouldn't have really been too much for you to see. Uh, hopefully you can see a bit between the before and after um, and how different it looks now um, to how it did before. For future videos uh, I'm going to try and get a camera set up so that you can see as I'm going through exactly what's going on and so that should give you a better insight into the project. So if you haven't seen part one yet uh, it's a bit of an introduction uh, to the project and to the boat and to me uh, so that's well worth having a look at so that it gives you a bit more information about what's going on. So if you enjoyed the video leave a like if you want to follow the project along then subscribe and if you've got any questions then leave it in the comments section below uh, and I'm more than happy to answer them. If you know anybody who would be interested in the project please share them the videos uh, it's great to see how many people are already watching mm -hmm.